do I have some good news? Now, this is a chart someone made about the CPU information. As you can see here, there's Intel and AMD stacked via price. Look at this. 1800X, octa-core, 16 thread, 3.6 to 4 gigahertz, 95 watt TDP. And then look at this. 546. These prices are insane. Look how it compares to the Intel CPU. Look at this, the 1600K, which we all saw as what AMD benchmarked against in the Zen reveal. 8 core, 16 threads, same as, same as Ryzen. But the base clock is 3.2 rather than 3.6, and it boosts up to 3.7 rather than 4. 140 watt TDP on the Intel side, while a 95 watt TDP on AMD side. And then for the new egg pricing here, 546 versus 1050. That's insane. And then you go down to the very bottom of this list. See how the I set the sorry the R7 1700 compares against the 7700K. Twice the core count, twice the thread count. Now notice that the 7700K has a higher clock speed by default. That's because the quad core i7 lineup from Intel aims to appeal to gamers due to having a higher clock speed because usually games will prefer a, a higher clock speed per core better single threaded performance over better, better multi-core performance which is why if you have a quad core at 5 gigahertz that'll do better than an octa core at 3.5 gigahertz that's the reasoning behind it I'm pretty sure if you put one of these Ryzen chips on water and overclock it and note that any CPU that has an X next to it that stands for XFR technology. That's the dynamic frequency voltage manipulating technology built into the chip and the uh, chipset of Ryzen, where the CPU will dynamically change itself. So if you're underwater, meaning you have bigger headroom for voltage and hence clock speed, and if you tell it to your use case scenario and you're cooling, it'll just ramp up and up and up until it reaches its limit. So I'm really interested to see how that turns out. Note that the ones that do not have an X do not have that feature, but you can still go into the BIOS and tweak it manually, like we did back in the old days. Now, mainstream. Ooh, this is very interesting. Look at this. The 1600X seems to be the top of the line of the mainstream. And notice how it compares to the i5. The 7600K, which is the KB Lake i5, Let's see, the i5 has 4 cores, 4 threads, AMD's has 6 cores, 12 threads, and notice how the clock speed isn't as high, I'm pretty sure you can overcome with overclocking. Less, a lower TDP, and the price is neck and neck. If the performance is advertised from the other leaks, I'll, from the leaks I'll show you in a second, ooh, Intel is going to have a serious uppercut. And then if you go down to the budget range, it's pretty crazy how this is comparing. Four cores, eight threads. This is pretty much the i7 equivalent. Not in the clock speed realm, but in four cores, eight threads. Note that the TDP is lower. But this is wild, this amount of performance. And I'm really excited to see how the flagship 1800X compares, because, ooh, Nelly, that's going to be really nice. Look at that clock speed though. The chip it's comparing against, it has a higher clock speed, lower TDP, lower cost. That sounds like a win in my book. Now off to the next article. Performance pricing details for AMD is coming Ryzen CPU leak online. And it shows some benchmarks. So you see here your CPU versus loaded baselines. Note that the 600K is here, so a hexacore, quad core, this one's a hexacore, this one's an octacore, and this one's a decacore. This is Ryzen. See how it falls short and everything else? Well, that's because all the CPUs are overclocked.
Now, as unfortunate as it may be, if you go down here, you see the information I had last time, and then you get a link in the comments. And here we go. Here are the benchmarks. Now see how it compares. See the Ryzen chip? Notice how the Ryzen chip isn't doing too well in single threaded. But note the price difference. I don't want that. Notice the price difference. This CPU is $1,700. This CPU is $1,000. This CPU is six to $700. This CPU is $350. The CPU, the assumption is that this is the R7 1800X, so about $550 or so. And then this CPU is roughly $450, I think, off the top of my head. Notice that these CPUs, the clock speeds, this one, I'm not too sure what the clock speed's running at. My assumption is 2.4 gigahertz. The 34 here. But I'm not sure if it turbo up. We can't tell at this point. And then it shows the encryption benchmark. And this is where it starts to shine. Since the clock speed's lower than, say, the i7 7700K, which is pretty good for gaming since it has a really, really high clock speed, once you get into tasks that use more than just the clock speed, the CPU starts to really shine. It fares really well in clock speed. Note that the orange is not the Ryzen, that's this Intel CPU. The second for the bomb is Ryzen. We go down here, integer math, doing well again. And then here's a little chart from earlier. Doesn't that look nice? And then another product listing from yet another source. So there's more and more leaks. It's really, really interesting. And then they're showing the R7 1700X, which is the step down. So you, you're going to get the thousand dollar performance for 389. For all we know, maybe this, the R7 1700X was shown at the Zen reveal event. Maybe they're showing off, they're, they're holding back the 1800X to, I don't know, take Intel by storm. No one knows at this point. Well, AMD knows, but that's obvious. Now look at this. So, same benchmarks as before. And it looks, it looks really promising, I have to say. I really hope that this is legitimate. I hope that Ryzen performs this well. Because if it performs this well, it's going to be a very tough sell to buy an Intel chip. And then here we go, back to another chart. It's more info. So this is what's been leaked so far, whereas this shows the expected information due to more leaks. This guy pieced the information together. So let's say the R7 700X, which was advertised as the thousand core, no, the thousand core, the thousand dollar killer, since it's only $397, 380 roughly. Man, it'll be very interesting. Let's look at these specs. Sure, it's 200 megahertz lower than the bigger brother 1800X. I'm not sure, because I'm pretty sure they have the same amount of level 3 cache. If I think they have, both have 16 megs of level 3 cache, I'm pretty sure that the IPC will be, same, will be the same across the architecture of Ryzen. So in that case, why would you buy the 1800X? Because it, overclocking is ridiculously easy nowadays. Turn the computer off, turn it back on, mash delete, go into the BIOS, increase the clock speed of your CPU, increase the multiplier, I should say, and then just increase the voltage core. Stress test it for 30 minutes, and if it's stable, repeat until you get to a temperature threshold that you feel safe with. Personally, I don't want my chips going above 80 Celsius, and unlucky for me, my 4790K doesn't want to comply with that, so it's it's undervolted right now. Anyway, these leaks look really promising. Considering Ryzen is supposed to release either late this month, being February, 
or early March. Man, this is it's very interesting. Lots of benchmarks popping up, more info. And then as I mentioned before, the XFR. The XFR, as I said, was the ability for the CPU to automatically change its clock speed and voltage. And of course it is cooling dependent as noted here. You're not going to get as far on air as you could on water. That's a no-brainer. It all depends on your heat dissipation abilities. I'm sure that you can... I'm sure there's a way you can run at a lower speed and possibly use even less power if you so desired. If you're in that market, you probably you would probably want to get the 65 watt TDP processor. Personally, I think this one is the best deal. I understand that they all have the same core or thread account, and this one's clock speed is really, really close. All I'd have to do is go in the BIOS and override some of those values. Note that we'll have to wait for benchmarks from Linus Tech Tips, JS2 Sense, Game Risk Nexus, etc., to get a baseline of how well these chips overclock, but in the current state, it looks really, really nice. I'm really, really excited for the next few months. Because Intel, Intel is sweating bullets about this. Here, I'll show you. If you just search up 7740K, you're going to find this. KB Lake X, and soon to be Skylake X. Now this seems very, very weird, but Intel has held the market for about 10 years now just in the lead. They have n roughly 90% of the market share of the CPU consumer desktop market. Because of this, Intel rakes in a large amount of money and is featured almost everywhere, and AMD doesn't get that luxury. Now, because Intel has been in the lead for so long, they're not expecting to get shoved off their little throne of cash. And due to these Ryzen leaks before, including this one, Intel feels threatened, as they very well should. Look at this. 7740K and the 7640K. So basically, it, it's a 3% higher clock, clock speed, as you can see here. Now you can see how the 7600K and the refresh of it, and then the 7700K and the refresh of it. Notice how the clock speed is increasing very much. Now I'm pretty sure this isn't the final number, and I've heard other rumors about it going up to 4.3 for the turbo on the refresh, and the i7 refresh going up to 4.6. That's what I've heard. But notice that's only 1 to 200 megahertz increase. That's five, 3 to 5% in this case. And the entire purpose, the entire reason this is happening, is because Intel wants to squeeze out a little, little bit more of gaming performance. Because for right now, games prefer faster cores over more cores. If they can, if Intel, Intel can go out right now and say, our CPU is the fastest CPU we've ever made. They can say that because it's only 100 megahertz faster than the previous. They're not lying. But note this. Support for quad channel DDR4 and LGA2066. That's X299. The consumer platform, at least for overclocking, is Z. So Z270 for Cabby Lake. This is X299. This is enthusiast lineup, so 8 RAM DIMMs, quad channel memory, that stuff. Think of the Haswell E or Broadwell E. Very interesting. And notice how the TDP is quite a bit higher. Not too sure what this, what X299 will bring to the table, but I'm just going to say this until you're going to need to make serious price cuts just to compete with AMD if this is true. <sighs> Personally, I don't take sides, but I'm really hoping that Intel takes a big loss on this. 
Not because I dislike the company. Mm-hmm. I have nothing against AMD or Intel. I just think that the market's been stagnant since there's been very little competition in the past few years. If this is true, it'll shake up the market in a really nice way. And well, Intel will probably lose a, quite a bit of money, and AMD will finally gain something. The consumer, you and me, will benefit from this. Because we're going to see cheaper CPUs with better performance rolling out all over the place. Intel, if this releases like this, as advertised in this little chart here, we're going to see a major price cut if Intel wants to have any sales. Who, who on earth would buy the 6900K when you can get a CPU that has a higher clock speed, lower TDP, and supposedly beats it? When you can get AMD's $540 version. Why would you pay $1,050? I wouldn't. If it supports... Well, the only thing I can think of that's going for the Intel side is support for quad channel memory. So think of X99's 8 RAM DIMMs. Ryzen only has 4, so it's limited to dual channel. I'm not too sure about the performance hit you'll get when it's... I'm pretty sure it's going to be minuscule. Lower TDP, higher clock speed. Now, we're going to have to look for benchmarks first before we can judge the IPC or the instructions per clock of the architecture, which means that if you had the AMD Ryzen versus the Intel, what is this one? This is Broadwell E. If they're both at the exact same clock speed and the benchmark favors AMD or Intel, then you can tell that whichever one was favored has a higher IPC or more instructions per clock, hence it performing better at the same clock speed. Anyway, this is very exciting, and I really hope this comes true. And considering the leaks are pointing out that this will release in a few more weeks, it's, it's very exciting. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day. I hope this info is real.